Revelation, you know, people come out of the woodwork for Revelation. Um, it's yeah, just I, I've known that right. <laughs> forever. As a pastor, I know that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they do. I mean, there's <laughs> no shortage of interest. No shortage of interest. Um, Which can be problematic because if you get the wrong person, I, I don't know if this, I, I guess we're recording, so you can use any of this yeah. if you want. Yeah. Uh, I said this, you know, in the open table conference, and it was spontaneous in the moment, but I've thought about it since then. Mm -hmm. but the book of Revelation is like the Japanese delicacy of fugu or blowfish, mm. which is highly toxic. Right. I mean, one blowfish can kill 30 people, but uh, it, is a, it is a culinary delicacy, but it has to be properly prepared. And I was reading about it. These these sushi chefs in Japan have to do a three-year apprenticeship wow. before they can ever do it. And then they have to take a final test that only 35% of the people pass. Wow. So it's very rigorous about who can serve you blowfish. And I think that's how we ought to approach the book of Revelation. Uh, three-year apprenticeship before you can teach it, and only about 35% will pass the test. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Because I, the, the part of what fuels this uh, out of balance curiosity of, about the book of Revelation is the, what I would call bad theology that is informing it. Um, well, it's the end of the Bible, right? right? So the Bible tells a story. It's not just a collection of aphorisms and wisdom sayings. I mean, that's in there. You have some of that, but there is a narrative arc, you know, that starts in Genesis and, you know, and it's got to land somewhere. Right. Right. Well, I mean, where are you going to end? You're not going to end in Jude. You're not going to, I mean, this is the canonical ending to the story. And so it has to be there. And uh, so it's, you know, it, it fits in the category of eschatology, right? Study of last right. things. But last things isn't the caboose. Last things are kind of like the engine, because where you think this thing is headed by your interpretation of last things, eschatology, determines an awful lot about how you're going to live your Christian faith. And mm -hmm. so people are interested in the book. It's super important. But if you get it wrong, it's super toxic. Hmm. And that's what we've, we've seen a lot of that. I, you know, I, I wanted to, I almost said in recent years, true enough. I mean, it, you know, by recent, if you go back to the 70s with you know, late great planet Earth and then yeah, the Left yeah. Behind series. Yeah. But this has actually been a problem for centuries and centuries. Uh, you know, I can show you the examples of, uh, I always forget this guy's name. Swiss theologian Abbott from about a thousand years ago, famous, did a lot of work on the song song. Can't think of his name again. I'm always there's, you know, there's some names you just always forget. And uh, but but he used it to raise armies for the crusades. And so there's a long history of the book of Revelation being abused, well, and misused, and sometimes in good faith. I mean, it isn't necessarily that people are have nefarious motives. They just, right. for whatever reason, didn't learn how to prepare blowfish correctly. <laughs> and so if, you, if the question is, what am I looking forward to? Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to people that I know are both scholarly and pastoral and have a good grasp of how to approach this text. And so... Uh, and, and I assume there's, there'll be different approaches, too. I mean, we're not a monolith, those of us that are going to be contributing. Right. Uh, there's, but, but, but we're not, we're not vastly apart. <laughs> right. We will have yeah. nuanced approaches that will be a little different, different emphasis. But I'm quite confident that everybody, that nobody's going to serve up any toxic blowfish, <laughs> that the toxins are all going to be taken out. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> So I've had, I've had my fill of those, um, yeah. you know, growing up. So I, I actually grew up in a church where we had, uh, I can remember several, but I remember it 
this way. It was always kind of good news to me. They would have these prophecy conferences and they brought in like the big guns from Dallas seminary, like John Walvoord and Charles Ryrie and all these Mm -hmm. guys, very dispensational, very, a very literal in the sense of face value of revelation. Um, And it, but what, what was good for me as a kid was those were summer Sunday nights at our church, which meant I didn't have to go. So I got to play. So I always loved them because I didn't, didn't have to go. So anyway, anyway, I have a love hate relationship with the book of revelation. Yeah. A lot of people do. And, and a, a lot of, I mean, I know a lot of Christians that have just essentially removed it from their Bible. I oh, mean, I did for a long it, time. It just lingers time. there at the end of the book. And they just like, they just got to stay away from it, which, yeah, if you don't understand how to approach in a healthy way, that's a better option than going there and being terrorized by it or, or just yeah. hopelessly confused and all of that. So I, mean, yeah, I, I hope to bring is a little bit of, uh, I will lean a little bit into the historical context. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's all kinds of ways to treat the book of Revelation in a healthy, redemptive, beautiful way. Um, I will probably lean a little bit toward, okay, what was John the Revelator up to? And what was the context? And what was he trying to do here? Not that I think that that all of that can be recovered or discovered, but I think there's, there's, um, there's a good amount of it. I mean, I'll just throw this out. I don't know. I was just reading the other day, and, and you have that passage there, and is it Revelation 10 this this is one of the one of the more awful passages where you have these where you have these locusts the face of men the hair of women mm-hmm. and is and all this you know and, and I, I think i know what the symbolism is about there but um and they they could torment people and and the torment would be for five months and and it would be so severe that people wanted to die but they couldn't die and I said, well, I, I, I won't, you know, this is not the class, but I said, I know what that is. That has to do with the siege of Jerusalem that began in August of AD 70. And I said, how long, I think, I think I know, how long did that go? Did that go for five months? So, you know, just looked it up real quick. Well, no, it didn't go for five months and it went for four months, three weeks and two days. Okay. Close enough. Five months. So yeah. th- this is, this is part of John's very wild and creative and apocalyptic uh, interpretation of, of what was happening during that very awful time. All right. Yeah. I, I, it's not time for me to teach the class. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, we're, I'm looking forward to having you on there as, uh, as much as you are able to do it. So it's going to be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Absolutely.